Welcome to Living Life. When I was younger, I remember taking a trip to Niagara Falls. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been to Niagara Falls, but is I know it's not counted as one of the seven wonders of the world, but to me, it was a wonder. And the reason why it was a wonder, because of the stature and the grandeur of Niagara Falls. Looking up at the falls and seeing the water splashing down, it was so majestic when I saw it. But I never forgot that image of the falls and the, the height and the, the loftiness in the, of, the, of the water when it splashed down and the, as, the, as the water came into the uh, river below. I was very young at the time, but as, as a youngster, you get images of what grandeur and majesty look like. Um, and I saw that in Niagara Falls. In the passage today, we will look at uh, the city of God, uh, Mount Zion, uh, the city of David. And we'll look at that passage and hopefully you will get the same picture of the majesty in the grandeur, in the stature, in the loftiness of God. Let us look at the passage together. Psalm chapter 48, verses 1 through 14. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. It is beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the uttermost heights of Zephon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadel. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroy them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen the city of the Lord Almighty. In the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Selah. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion. Go around her. Count her towers. Consider well her ramparts. View her citadel, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. Hi again. As we look into the passage in Psalms 48, I particularly want to refer you to verses 1 and 2 of this passage. Mount Zion is compared to Mount Zaphon. Mount Zaphon is the highest mountain in Syria. And the psalmist, which happens to be the sons of Korah again, the sons of Korah who changed the past and broke the cycle of the past, and now have great gratitude towards God, great humility towards God, great longing towards God. Tell us in this passage about the majesty of Mount Zion. They tell us not only that it is, it is they compare it to Mount Zaphon, but they also compare it to some of the great uh, mountains, even from, uh, even when we look at uh, the world and we look at some of the mountains, the greatest mountains in the world. In particular, uh, Mount Zaphon in the scriptures is also referred to by Lucifer. In Isaiah 14, 13, when Lucifer says that he will ascend to the highest place when he was in rebellion to God. So Mount Zaphon has a very important role in the scripture in terms of giving us the understanding of the loftiness 
the height and the majesty of what being on that mountain looks like. In Psalm 48, 3, the psalmist then talks about by being on that high mountain. High mountains were very important in terms of warfare, in terms of defense. In Israel right now, uh, Masada is a place that was considered to be impregnable, considered to be impenetrable because of its high elevation where you can overlook and see the enemy. But as we know from Scripture, is it the mountain that is impenetrable? Is it the high loftiness of Mount Zion, Zion that is impenetrable? Or is it our God that is impenetrable? The psalmist, the sons of Korah, want us to know that it is God who is the impenetrable one. He is our defense. He is our citadel. He is our fortress. And as we heard earlier, he is our refuge. In Psalm 48, 4 through 7, it tells us that even the tax of hostile nations against Mount Zion, against the city of God, which is used interchangeably for Jerusalem, will be ineffective, will be futile, because this city is impenetrable. Its walls, its fortifications are impenetrable. In fact, we are invited in this verse, to look at the walls and the fortifications of Mount Zion. We are invited to, to take a look and see how indefensible this place, this place is, this Mount Zion, that no nation can breach its walls or no nation can breach its citadel because of one fact. There sits in the presence of Mount Zion a holy, righteous, powerful God. He sits there in Mount Zion. His presence is there. That's why when the Ark of the Covenant would leave Israel, the people would yell, Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. But when the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God, would return to the city of God, to Jerusalem, the people would rejoice. There would be a jubilation because the presence of God has returned to the holy city. The presence of God in our lives is very important. The reason why we are more than conquerors the reason why we can stand in this world, the reason why we can live as we are impenetrable and impregnable is not because of these frail human bodies, but only because the God of the universe, creator God, who loves us with an unfailing love, lives in us. And as we Move through this passage, we see in verses 11 through 14 that the real fortification in our lives, just like the fortification in the city of God, was an eternal God who lives forevermore. And because there's an eternal God who lives forevermore, we will live forevermore. The Bible tells us that one day a new Jerusalem will come down from heaven and we will exist in that new Jerusalem with our God. That city will not need the sun because the, the Lamb, Christ, Jesus Christ will be its light. That city will be fortified against all the nations, and nothing evil can ever exist there. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that's why we have the right, that's why we have the privilege to exist there. 
I encourage you to seek God so that your name will also be written in the Lamb's book of life and you will also be a resident of the city of God, Mount Zion. Let us pray. Lord, we just pray for your word. We pray, O oh God, for the truth of your word. We pray, O oh God, that Mount Zion would be a reality to those who don't know you, O oh God, that they will repent of their sins, seek your forgiveness, and their names will also be written in the Lamb's book of life. And they, will too, will be residents of Mount Zion. Amen, amen, and amen.